Hey you guys, this is Amber with Amber Poetry and Song and I'm coming with another video. This one is not a prophetic uh, word. Well, it's prophetic, but it's not a vision that I had. So I was on, I was in my kitchen on November 19th at night um, and I was cooking and I believe that was a Saturday. Let me see. Yeah, so Saturday evening. And I just kept singing, you'll bring honor to us all. You'll bring honor to us all. You'll bring honor to us all. And if for those who know, that's a song from Mulan, <laughs> from Disney. Um, the Lord put that song on my mind and I was singing it like out of nowhere because I hadn't just heard the song. I hadn't just watched the movie. I haven't seen that movie in a while. And I was in here singing that. Um, and sometimes that is how the lord speaks as well through song with some of his children and with me personally through through the lyrics so when i i sung that i stopped and i went to go look up the lyrics um and so let's see so i'm going to read you the synop the synopsis of the movie Mulan um, and basically what it's all about because when I was led to the lyrics the lyrics reminded me of Esther um, but it says Mulan okay fearful that her ailing father will be drafted into the Chinese military Mulan her name is Ming Na Wen um, takes his spot though as a girl living under a patriarchal regime she is technically unqualified to serve she cleverly impersonates a man and goes off to train with fellow recruits accompanied by her dragon mushu she uses her smarts to help ward off a hun invasion falling in love with a dashing captain along the way okay so that is the synopsis of mulan but if you um go to YouTube and look up You'll Bring Honor to Us All by Mulan. You know, that part in the movie is when um, she's being prepared to be made a bride um, to go into the emperor. And so I'm going to go read those lyrics. And I want y'all to go watch the video um, of her of, of them singing the song because as they're singing the song they're prepping her they're getting her ready they're um it's like her purification um process but in that whole little scene um because she's now ready to go before the emperor and so um i'm going to read i'm going to go to um hebrews chapter 11 i mean chapter 12 first I'm going to read these scriptures first that I have with this and start from there. So Hebrews chapter 12, I'm going to read verses 6 through 13. Because this is where I was led to with, um, with this, you know, word. phone's moving a little slow okay hebrews chapter 12 verses 6 6 to 13 it says for whom the lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth if ye endure chastening god dealeth with you as with sons for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not it says but if ye be without chastisement whereof all are partakers then are ye bastards and our sons furthermore we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own displeasure but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed and so 
for those who know if you've been chastised by the Lord, that is like a purification process. A wilderness experience is is the chastening of the Lord, but it's a purification process. The Lord is purifying you. You're being tried. You're being put through the fire and prepared for what God is going to use you for. Um, and in that case, is in that case, sometimes um, that also comes before uh, marriage um, for some. And so the other place I was led to was Esther chapter two. Esther chapter two, and I'm going to start at verse eight. And this is about um, Esther finds favor. So verse eight says, so it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard. And when many maidens were gathered together into Shushan, the palace, to the custody of Hegai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house to the custody of, of Hegai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification, which such things as belonged to her and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids into the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been 12 months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of women, of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king, whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women, to the custody of Shagaz, the, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the, the uncle of murder, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken into King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month to Beth, in the seventh year of his reign. And um, it says, and the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Ashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time, then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her for Esther did the commandment of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. So she reminded me of Esther because, um, you know, the whole in the movie Mulan, she's disguising herself as a man to go in to fight for her family, for her people. And so she reminded me of Esther in that way, because Esther was a Jew, but when she was uh, when she made when she was made queen and went into the palace, the king did not know that she was a Jew, and she, you know, her assignment was to save her her people, her the nation of Israel from the hands of Haman, from him trying to kill and destroy their their entire nation, um, and so. What the Lord caused me to understand with this is that the Lord is calling forth the Esthers for a time such as this. He's, he's been calling um, for a time such as this, but the preparation stage is complete and those Esthers are now ready. They are ready to be presented to the king and for their assignments. And so I'm going to go and read um, the lyrics to this song um and go and watch the video 
with the song because on there the older women in there they are prepping her preparing her and then at the end of the video and in, in that one scene um she's she's uh, her her purification is complete and she's ready to go before the, the emperor um and so um i'm gonna read these lyrics it's called you'll bring honor to us all and i kept singing that part three times so it says this is what you give me to work with because the lady's talking about Mulan and how she came in there <laughs> looking because Mulan was not a girly girl. She was like tomboyish. Um, it says, well, honey, I've seen worse. We're going to turn this soul's ear into a silk purse. We'll have you washed and dried, primped and polished till you glow with pride. Trust me, recipe for instant bride. You'll bring honor to us all. And so um it's that part okay so as i mean not esther mulan is being prepared and it says trust me recipe for instant bride she's being prepared to be a bride um but we also know in the movie she was a warrior um and so that she had the assignment of saving her people even though she she went on her own and did it because her father didn't know it, it it reminded me of the part when mordecai told esther about um the plans haman's plans and when esther said she said if i perish i, I perish uh when she was saying that she, you know when it came to going before the king because you could not go before the king unless the scepter was held out to you um and unless you had the permission to do that and so Esther was brave in that way to where she was willing to lay down her life for her people. The same way with Mulan, she was willing to lay down her life for her people. And, and her attitude from that was, if I perish, I perish. Even though she was not commanded to do that by anybody, she, she took it upon herself to do that. Um, and so, you know, she was being prepped to be a bride, to go before the emperor um, in this in this scene. But she also was, she her, she had an assignment in that movie, in that movie, the same way with Esther. Esther was being prepared to be a bride to a king over the province of um, per, uh, Shushan. Um, I believe that's it. Yeah, Persia, Media, but Shushan. Um, she was being prepared to be the bride to a king who was not a Jew, as well as um, to take on an assignment to finish off really the line, the lineage of the Amalekites, because Saul, who didn't do it because he wouldn't kill King Agag, how he killed King Agag all the way in, in, in uh, I want to say it's first Samuel. In that chap, in that um, book, there would have been no need for Haman or for a woman to come in to finish the job, and that's something else to note. When it comes to the Lord commanding a man, because our God is a God of order, so yes, He will use a man first. But when a man won't do it, He will send a woman to complete the task to um, to you know be obedient to His word to stand up and, and to be commissioned for that assignment. Um, you can see that in the book of Judges when Deborah and Barak, uh, were, Barak was getting ready to go out to battle and he wanted Deborah to come with him. And in the end, the person that was used to, to complete the task was actually Jael, a woman. Uh, and so Esther, her assignment was linked all the way back to Saul, who had been rejected of the Lord, not being obedient completely to what the Lord had asked him to do, because he he did what the Lord asked him to, but partially, he let King Agag live, 
and because he let him live, Haman was able to be created and try to bring destruction and, you know, kill the Jews, bring destruction to the Jews and, and to try to annihilate, annihilate um, their nation because he comes directly from out of that lineage. If you study and if you pay attention, he is the Amalekites. He comes from those, that nation of people. Um, and it's because of Agag, King Agag. He was not killed. Saul spared him. And so that is what caused the Lord to reject Saul in the first place. Um, and so it says, you'll bring honor to us all. It says, wait and see when we're through, boys will gladly go to war for you with good fortune and a great hair do. You'll bring honor to us all. She's being prepared. It says, um, and, and this is her purification because she took a bath in that scene. They were putting clothes on her, doing her makeup, doing her hair, all of that. And so that's... Um, that's what her purification was. But um, when it comes to our purification, like I, I think I said before at the beginning of this video, um, that chastisement that you go through when the Lord's chastising you is, is looked at as purification. And so, yes, part of our purification is, you know, making sure we look clean, making sure our skin is looking up to par, our hair, um, nails, makeup, if you feel led to put that on, um, your hair done, you know, just different things like that, perfumes, you know, sweet odors and things that, like that. That's a part of the purification process, but also when it comes to your heart, to your character, to how you carry yourself as a woman, um, all of that is a part of purification and you've been through this that's what the lord is showing me with this that those who are called forth who have like who are um are like esther they have gone through this it's complete um you are ready for the next phase which is the assignment and for some marriage and the assignment um, and so it says a girl can bring her family, a girl can bring her family great honor in one way by striking a good match. And this could be the day that reminds me of Esther, Esther, you know, that reminds me of Esther and in Mulan, that's exactly what she did. But in this part, it was, she wasn't yet dressed up you know, trying to disguise herself as a warrior to go fight in war. It says men, men want girls with good taste, calm, obedient, who work fast paced. So the women, the older women are telling her how to be, you know, when it comes to having a husband, calm, obedient, uh, who works fast paced with good breeding. So able to have babies, able to Work fast paced like a virtuous woman, what Proverbs 31 describes as a virtuous woman um, in a tiny waist. And I'm not saying that all men want that, but keeping yourself up, basically, you'll bring honor to us all. We all must serve our emperor who guards us from the Huns. That's the opposite um, nation that was coming against them. A man by bearing arms, a girl by bearing sons. It says when we're through, you can't fail, like a lotus blossom, soft and pale. How could any fellow say no sale? You'll bring honor to us all. There, you're ready, not yet. This part, her the, the little grandmother came in, she was finished, but the grandmother came in with her finishing touches as, as, uh, as it pertains to their culture, because you know, their practices, some of those things aren't, aren't you know, part of, the Christian culture, if you want to say, it says, um, there you're ready, not yet. An apple for serenity, a pendant for balance, beads of jade for beauty. You must proudly show it. Now add a cricket just for luck, and even you can't blow it. And this is the same cricket from Pinocchio, I believe, that they had on this scene. It says, ancestors, hear my plea. 
this is Mulan speaking to her ancestors. And, you know, we don't talk to our ancestors. We talk to God because I feel like at this point she felt like she wasn't ready. And so with this, it says, hear my plea, help me, help me not to make a fool of me and to not uproot my family tree, keep my father standing tall. And um, I feel like this part is showing that, okay, those who are called forth, who are being called forth as Esther's, some of y'all may feel like you're not ready for um, the assignment, you know, not ready for all that the Lord has been preparing you for, but you're ready. But, you know, right when something's about to take place, you know, the, that's something that always happens. Like you suddenly feel like you're not ready, like you're not prepared, you're not qualified, but you're qualified. The Lord has qualified you through that purification process and you're ready. Um, it says, scarier than the undertaker, we are meeting our matchmaker, destiny. Guard our, guard our girls and our future as it fast unfurls. Please look kindly on these cultured pearls, each a perfect porcelain doll. And then it says, please bring honor to us. And they just kept repeating after, uh, after each other. Please bring honor to us. Please bring honor to us. Please bring honor to us all. And so the Esthers are being called forth um, in a, for a time such as this to bring honor to the Most High God. Um, and I'm going to read what I wrote down. Um, these Esthers are women who are courageous, who are willing to put it all on the line in order to save their family, their families, their people, so others will not suffer. Um, you have an assignment, and just like Esther, you have a Haman. So you have been assigned to defeat whatever that Haman is um, that's coming against your bloodline. Um, Haman wanted to kill the Jews. We know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. There are things in your bloodline that are generational that have been set up in order to kill your bloodline um, off that many in your family don't recognize or realize um, that keeps them you know, from, from coming into fellowship with Christ. Um, it says there are things that have been set up to kill God's people that many don't realize to keep God's children from knowing and experiencing the height and the depth of God's love. Um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he has placed on his children, because if the enemy can kill God's ch uh, children, or if he can quench the spirit in the body of Christ, then it will make his job easier to come in, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Um, but if God's children are on guard always, being watchful, walking in their callings, in the anointing, um, using the gifts he's given them, then he doesn't stand a chance. And as I was writing this, um, as I was writing this, I was thinking about something else. So um, when it comes to these Hebrew camps, Hebrew Israelite camps, um, this is going to trigger some people. Uh, they have, they, they teach in a way to where they make it seem like there's only false prophets, okay, which is a part of quenching the spirit because in the Bible you can see that there are false prophets, but there are also true prophets, and some of these prophets are women, and so it's a way to silence the women. There's an agenda in place to keep women silent, to keep them from not just women, just other people who may have that prophetic gift, who may have been called to the office of a prophet from speaking, uh, because the only thing that's being mentioned is um, false prophets, false prophets. Yes, we are in those times that there will be many false prophets, but the Lord has true true children that are standing up for him that he is using and wanting to use and by teaching in that way it's contrary to the word for one but it keeps people silent it's 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 causing the body to be dysfunctional um it's causing the bodies of christ to be handicapped 
because these people are not using their gifts because these gifts are given to us so that we use it for the body and for others and the lord is revealing things through these gifts but when you're sitting on those gifts the rest of the body will not know certain things if you don't speak if you don't open your mouth and speak because not everybody have that same gift and that same measure of grace so you know that is how the body of christ can, uh the the how the spirit can be quenched and that in a sense can be used as a haman um that the haman that i'm speaking metaphorically right now that the lord is calling forth certain esters to um to speak out against so that people will come from out of that bondage and will be able to stand up and be you know courageous and not afraid to actually speak out and speak up either on things that are going on in these camps or um the gifts that god has given them without feeling shame about it without feeling like um they can't use what the lord has given them especially if they've been baptized in christ because the word says when we've been baptized in christ that you receive the gift of the holy spirit with the gift of the holy spirit comes different measures of that grace you know different measures um when christ was was in the flesh he was operating in full measure of it of these gifts that we are given but as the body of christ when we're baptized in him that is distributed among amongst all of us and if we are telling people that they cannot that to don't listen to certain people you know calling them false prophets and you have not checked with god you are handicapping the body of christ you are um you're handicapping the body of christ and you're quenching the spirit because god didn't give us these gifts for no reason like these gifts are meant to be used they are meant to be used and not everybody have this gift the reason why i can speak on this gift is because i have the gift and so i can only speak on what i know and so that is what many people should learn to do only speak on what you know and if you don't know then be quiet because you could be speaking against the holy ghost um when you do that and so one of those Haman's is not just these camps, but any church that will try to silence people from, from being used in the way that the Lord wants to use them. That is the enemy working through these organizations to make them not be used by God in the way that God is wanting to use them. And so the Lord is calling forth the Esthers of this generation and they have an assignment and some of them are, this word has to do with marriage and it has to do with assignment. And the, the assignment is connected, the, the marriage is connected to the assignment. Um, you know, the, the, the purpose of the marriage is because of the assignment. And so Esthers are being called forth. You are prepared. You have been purified. You've been through that purification process and you're ready to be used by the Lord in the way that he wants to use you. And it's to come up against the Hamans. Um, an, another another uh, example of what uh, of a Haman, when I say that I'm speaking metaphorically, um, could be is the Jezebel spirit. Um, either in your bloodline or just in different different things in this world. Like the Lord is raising up children that are not afraid to speak up, to speak out and to go to war on behalf of his children, um, to save souls to so that people will no longer suffer with different things. And he's using men too, don't get me wrong. I'm not just saying that he's only using women or, or the women more than the women, uh, more than the men, no, but this this is what this word pertains to the esters um 
but yeah, he's calling forth those Esther. He's sending them forth at this point to go out and to do what he's called them to do. And nobody could tell them what they have been called to do except for the Lord. You don't know what that what the Lord has called these people forth to do. So if you're somebody who likes to put your mouth on people and speak out on against people because of what they're doing, the Lord is going to deal with you because he reveals these things to you through his Holy Spirit. You will not know unless the Lord has revealed it to you what a person is called forth to be doing. And so be careful of that. Be real careful of doing that. Um, but that is all that I have for this word. Um, he put that song on my mind. The other, the other song is from Tarzan. I woke up and I heard the song and it was, and it was not playing, but I, I heard it in the spirit. It was, you'll be in my heart by Ta by Tarzan. So I'm going to do another video soon and break that down because the Lord speaks however he wants to speak. If he'll speak through the mouth of a donkey and the Bible, you cannot say how the Lord will and will not speak. The ultimate way, yes, of course, that we always want to direct people back to is first and foremost, his word, definitely. But there are other ways that the Lord will go about um, delivering messages. It depends on the way the way that person is or how the how that person receives. You know, I'm a person who loves music, you know, the arts, different stuff like that, poetry. So the Lord speaks, the speaks through uh, to me through through music, through lyrics, you know, nature, d different things with me because it's a, a it's a bunch of things that I am into that I love, uh, but a lot of times it is through lyrics, it's through numbers because um, page is called Amber Poetry and Song. I I love music i love song i love poetry i love to sing i write poetry i can write songs the lord has gifted me with that ever since a child and so that is the one of the ways that he will speak to me to get a message across to me and so that is all that i have um i want to say before i get off that Nothing that I'm saying in this video is to intentional is to intentionally um, offend anyone, but I'm speaking what I know, um, and what God is leading me to say. Um, the Lord is raising; He's sending forth His esters, and these esters, they uh, a lot of people ain't gonna like it, but it is not for them to like. It's not for them to like because there's a bigger um, picture here and it's bigger than all of us it's about saving souls um, because the enemy is working like in this hour through many and especially in the church in 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 the church in these camps um, you know I used to go to one but I the Lord had me separate from there um, He's working through these, and I believe that the Lord led me there just to, to learn certain things, but for this very purpose right here, to see what was not right. Because the Lord knows who he can and cannot use to speak up on certain things. And so, um, yeah, the enemy is working through many avenues and these esters are being sent forth to um to, to on on the assignments that the Lord has called them to to help save souls to keep people from suffering to help deliver them from you know the enemy and so that is all for those who understand they they will get it but for those who don't, you better pray and ask the Lord, but you better not put your mouth against me because everything that you say against me, you will be confounded and you will be put to shame in Jesus' name. So be careful.
if you don't agree with this word, if you don't agree with what I'm doing, be careful of what you say against me. Because you put your mouth against me, I guarantee you, you're going to see that you shouldn't have did it. So that's all I have to say. Peace and goodbye and blessings to you. Goodbye.